A very important day today. Xi Jinping and uh, Joe Biden will meet in Bali, the first face-to-face -face meeting. What does this do for the profile of Bali and Indonesia, and what would you hope to gain from this notoriety in the G20? It's huge. Uh, last night, uh, Steve, and thank you for having me. Um, I had the honor to, on behalf of the country, to welcome President Biden at 9.45 uh, p.m. Uh, with Air Force One landing in Bali. And uh, he's looking very fresh. Uh, he's looking uh, very uh, excited. He arrived in wonderful Indonesia. Uh, Balinese uh, dancers uh, together with us uh, greeting him. So he was very optimistic. And I think it's a, going to be a historic meeting with President Xi later today. And we will push on also the uh, issues of recover together recover stronger uh, which is a central theme as well as on digitalizations on uh, health as well as sustainability so for global uh, prosperity in the global economy as well as geopolitically what do you hope comes of this meeting expectations are fairly low yes uh, because of the uh, geopolitical situations but this is bali uh, Bali is, uh, we call it the island of the gods, so anything is possible. So uh, Bali is also known for the mornings of the world. So uh, it's endless possibilities and I think with the settings, uh, with not only sun, sea and sand, Steve, but also serenity, spirituality and sustainability, I hope there are huge uh, issues that will be resolved in this summit and I think we could uh, march towards uh, recovery uh, together how, and stronger. How encouraged are you by moves in China, at least initial moves, to relax zero COVID? They're reducing the quarantine. Uh, I think 19% of overseas visitors to Indonesia and Bali come from China. That's one in five. And they've been non-existent zero. For, zero for the last three years. How encouraged are you that he is relaxing that, potentially relaxing that and getting the Chinese back? They we, spend the most per capita as well. We are very encouraged. It's absolutely critical and we're watching the development very closely. Uh, China was consistently top three uh, of the foreign tourist arrival and lately has been uh, number one. But since uh, COVID, uh, they have dropped out of the top 10, obviously, because of the zero COVID policy. And we are really banking on the uh, shift in the policy. And uh, we are projecting that by 2023, we're starting to receive uh, tourist arrivals from China. And we're very excited because it's going to be jobs that will be created. Uh, there will be 4.4 million new jobs by 2024 for these uh, sectors. Well, tell me about that. You're ahead of the creative economy. You want to transform Indonesia. You are also competing against other regional centers uh, for global talent. You've announced uh, the soon to be implemented second home visa. Foreigners who come with 130,000 US dollars in their pocket, which is not necessarily a lot on a global uh, you know, uh, perspective. But again, you can get upwards of a 10 year visa. What yes. are you trying to achieve? With this. What we are trying to achieve, we want to target uh, Bali in particular and other destinations in Indonesia, focusing on quality and sustainability type of tourism. So for digital economies, we have a new sets of visa with electronic visa on arrival with seamless, you got the uh, approval even pre-departure, you got here, we don't have to check your visa and on immigration, it will be less then few minutes for you and you're out the door. That will be catered to the digital economies three to six months, they can stay here. And then for the longer uh, staying, we call it the silver economies. People who wanna spend uh, years in Bali, we are offering the second home visa and it's already implemented for up to 10 years. And this is something that uh, I think will be uh, the uh, game uh, changer for Indonesia's tourism. It's going to be longer length of stay, quality spending to local economies and jobs will be created. You want to get creative economy, movie producers, TV producers, yes. all of that, right? Yes. Well, also, we're just hearing right now, you know, Elon Musk is giving his address to the B20. He's talking about a more affordable electric vehicle, a more affordable Tesla. Uh, there's been lots of talk here in Indonesia 
about EVs and EV purchase subsidies, and I talked to Indica Energy. They're doing batteries, they're doing EV vehicles, commercial vehicles. How important is that to you as a creative economy minister? It's hugely important because we are transforming destinations uh, to green destinations and smart destinations. So Nusa Dua, for instance, we're here at the heart of Indonesia's tourism hub. This will be completely only powered by electric vehicle. I was on Indica uh, Foxconn bus last night and we are seeing numbers of requests for electric vehicle hit through the roof. Uh, even if you're uh, applying to buy now, you will only get delivery 18 months uh, from now. So the demand is there, we need to work on the supply and I think uh, Indonesia has the ecosystem uh, from raw materials towards finished products right. for uh, electric-based uh, vehicles. Well, Sandy, uh, we know you were in private business. You, you became one of the most wealthy individuals here in Indonesia. Uh, you ran for vice president. You are tourism minister now. Do you have further political aspirations? Will you run for president in February 2024? Right now, my job is to serve President Jokowi, and I think uh, political parties will determine their nominations by October, exactly about a year from now. Uh, I'm going to focus on making sure that I do my jobs well and let the political parties decide. I'm, I think uh, Indonesia has been so great uh, for us. Uh, I built my business from zero to about 30,000 employees now. It's time to give back and contribute uh, to our beloved nation. I'm coming back to Jakarta or Bali in October to get your decision whether you're running <laughs> or not, okay?